to be. Now look at your neighbor. Tell him, I mean it. I mean it. This is the place. Come on, let's sing it out to the Lord. Put your hands again. Found love. Found love beyond all.
there's a, that's a spiritual battlefield. Sometimes we're battling so much to stay right, and do right, and talk right, and act right, and be right, that we realize that we're getting up from the ground every now and then. Taking a shot from the enemy, not down, but not defeated. I said, not down, but not defeated. So sometimes what we need to do on these like Wednesday nights, we do it on Sundays, but on these Wednesday nights, we need to let the Holy Spirit recharge our spiritual battery. We need to praise Him and get intimate and make it personal. Because the closer that we get to Him, the stronger we become. The closer our walk is with the Lord, the stronger we become. The more intimate you worship Him with your voice, with your heart, with your mind, the stronger your life becomes. The greater is He that is in than he that is in the world. I need him in me. You need him in you? I need him in me. And his love is overwhelming because he's good. Say he's good. Come on, let's sing it to him.
the darkness, Lord God. They put us on a solid ground, solid foundation, Lord God. And Father, we are left with each other prayer request tonight, Lord. We lay hands on this prayer request, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to do a marvelous work on this prayer request, Father. For tonight, as we join and live together, Father God, as a family, we open our hearts, Lord. We open our hearts and our minds to understand what you have for us tonight, Lord. Father, move. Move within the speaker tonight, Lord God. Let your word come forward with power. And Father, Lord, just let the Holy Spirit move within us tonight, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit move in a mighty way tonight, Lord God. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Let's sir, I agree with each other tonight, man.
doesn't mean they don't need someone to make sure they're okay. Can you say amen? I may have been gone for a little bit of, a little bit of time, but it's good to see Sister Sandy with us, man. I'm telling you. In case you haven't noticed, Texas is in the house. Yeah, yeah. Also in the house, Pastor Eddie and Pastor Charlie are here, and what an incredible blessing, and we're glad. And so I told him, you can preach with authentic with you. And I said, okay. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I got here to tag team and let him minister, man, and let him share. I don't care if he just shares his testimony. We are glad they're here tonight. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. All right. So, good to see everybody. You all, you all know all the things that are uh, that are taking place uh, this week as this week comes in. Um, just to give this announcement, because this is what's happening on Saturday. Uh, most of you know the home fellowships meet on Friday and all that. Be there, take somebody with you. Your your light needs to shine. If it doesn't shine in your house. You gotta get out of your house. You gotta. It's, it's like those things you buy in the in the store at Walmart. You know, when you crack them, they start to, you know, they start to shine. Stuff like they use them in the pier with the guys. They they put them in strings up in the water to attract fish. Your light needs to attract people, but it won't happen unless you're touching base with them, calling them, getting out of the house. Can you say amen? So that's a great opportunity. Pick somebody up, take them with you. I guarantee you they will enjoy themselves because those home fellowship groups and Bible study, they have a great yeah. time. It's Amen. a great place to be. All right, Saturday. Say Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, we have our official yearly uh, leaders and volunteers breakfast. Now, this is going to start at 9 o'clock. Uh, the pastors, we are doing the cooking. Us are, we're, us, we're all in there. Big kitchen will fit. Oh, big kitchen, big pastors, we can handle it. But we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna we'll, don't repeat that. You see it. So we're gonna have a great time. But here's the thing: you must, you must, you must sign the list. You must sign up in the lobby for everyone who is involved in volunteering and helping and and are a part of that. You're coming to the breakfast. You must. Sign up in the lobby so that we know all the pastors have sent in the amount of people that are coming. We've got it all set up. We're going to have the back the breakfast uh, set up, the tables and stuff. So it's going to be an incredible uh, blessing. You can come early. You can spend some time in the prayer room if you like. Man. That's a good place to be. Yeah. Saturday morning, we always invite you to be a part of that. And so we're really looking forward to it, and, and I'm excited. Uh, I will tell you that... Uh, that there will always, when pastors are cooking, there will always be enough to eat. You know that, right? Because you all know that we are not going to cook and then when we're done, not have anything to eat. So there's going to be enough food. So you got to sign up. And let me just remind you, as, as we come into a Sunday morning uh, uh, worship, uh, always, always invite someone. <laughs> yeah. Always bring somebody with you. Don't, don't let, don't let your Christianity lose that light. Man. The Bible said, Jesus said it. He said it himself. He says, "You are a light Man. in the darkness that's in this world." <laughs> and uh, that light needs to shine bright. Can you say, "Amen"? Yeah. All right. So that that said, as we continue on, let me do a couple of things and just remind you uh, of some great things that are coming up. You'll hear a little bit more information about it. Uh, on Sunday, we are putting together a. Uh, I'm looking for that thing. It's not in here. Huh? The, 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 <laughs> the, uh, the Christmas. Oh, no, it's not in there. It's but not you, in there. It's but you can Christmas. announce it. So it'll be in there at the end of this month, beginning of next month, right? But you, this Sunday will be there. Okay, we'll get you that information because we're going to do something really great. We've well, never done it before. Uh, we, we've tried it in similar ways. Uh, but the gift giveaway for this area that are around us and just kind of, we're going to be a blessing. The, the church is supposed to be yeah. a blessing to the world that's yeah. out there. Yeah. They don't know we care. Come on, Pastor. They don't know what love is until we demonstrate that. Isn't that what Jesus did? Yeah. That's right. That's what Jesus did. Now, so this is going to be a great time. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a blast. And I just want to invite you to it. Amen. Are you ready to bless him? Yeah. All right. Listen, today... We, we got, there's two special things. I know it's the time to bring your, your, your tithe and, 
and, and to bless the Lord and honor him with your first fruits. Everybody say first fruits. Honor him. But we are also going to be a blessing to Pastor Eddie and Sister Charlie. So I want to challenge you that so that you can mark down $20 or mark down in your giving $10. I sealed my envelope and I forgot. Amen. So I got another one. Because I knew that if I opened this one, I would, it, would, it would just be terrible, and shredded, and messed up. So I just, I just put uh, the amount in another one, and, and I want to be a blessing. You want to be a blessing? Take that envelope, fill it out, help us. We're going to bless him. You need to understand the blessing yeah, that comes to you when you bless somebody yeah, else. They quoted Jesus in the book of Acts. Luke wrote it down in the book of Acts where Jesus said, it is more blessed when you give than it is when you receive. Do we believe that? Yes, sir. Let's stand to our feet, everybody, all across this building here. Thank you, Lord. Gentlemen, come on down, can you? Come on down. Come on down. When, when I was in El Paso, the, the building that uh, the Cabrales use is, is really unique. Um, as you walk in, there's there's four four doors, all all on one wall. And and you walk in and it's like make a choice right now. <laughs> uh, make a choice. I thought of what, what's, what is it? Let's make a, remember, let's yeah. make a deal. Yeah. Let's make a deal. What would you take for door number one? <laughs> How many know you don't have to do that with God? Come on, yeah. man. He's already got it lined up. Yes, He's got your blessing lined up for you. Yeah. He, even, even, this is the, this is the good part of God. Even when you and I haven't got it all together, He's still good to you. Do you know why? Because you carry his name. Because he doesn't want the world to look at you as you follow Christ and not see the blessing that he has on your life. Sometimes Christians really miss out on their ability to honor the Lord because God already blesses us even when we're still trying to get things together. <laughs> Come on, let's bow our heads as we offer this to the Lord and we pray over this offering. And we ask God to bless us. Brother, Brother Frank Estrada, way over here on my right, would you ask God's blessing on this? Lord Father, we thank you for your wondrous presence here this evening, Lord Father. As we give to you, Lord God, our tithes and offerings, we pray, Lord Father, that you would use them, Father God, for you here on earth, Lord God, and reach those who seek, Father. We thank you and give you all the praise and glory. Yes, we do. In Jesus' name, let us all speak. Amen. Amen.
Facebook, Pastor Phil shooting a gun and all that kind of stuff. What? And so, yeah, you haven't seen that yet. <laughs> See, I knew that video was taken for a reason. I thought it'd be really nice to, uh, to Sister Charlie and her husband here. Because, you know, when somebody gets video on you, man, you better watch it. Better watch it. Better watch it. What an incredible blessing. They're here. Uh, God does wonderful things. Let's just give the Lord a great big hand clap as they both come and just kind of give a shout out. started when uh, Pastor decided to go on a road trip to um, third world country El Paso. <laughs> I tell him when he, get, when he gets there like, oh, I'm so sad because I'm, I'm so over here by myself and it feels like, you know, you are the third world country, but you have to encourage yourself and, wow. and, and encourage one wow. another, me yeah. and my husband, yeah. and, and just trust and believe God that what he's going to do is going to be amazing. Yes, and he is. does because he never lets you down. Right. Come on. I want to I want to thank God for you guys releasing Pastor. I know how amazing he is, and I love Sister, Sister Didi and Pastor. I told him, Pastor, you taught me well. You Man. taught me well. I sat there where you're sitting, and I took the messages in, and, on, I, allowed, yeah. and, and I, I wanted to allow the Lord to just turn me into another person because the person yeah. that was... That, that he got from the muddy clay and saved was Ooh. an ugly person. And I just want to thank Ooh. him because he's so good. Like, I'm just, like, I wanted to be here tonight. And me, me and my husband wanted to be here. And he had a vacation since last Friday. Uh -oh. And then Friday, Saturday, and, and uh, Sunday and Monday came. And we decided not to come because we said, you know what, my son's car broke down. You know when... When everything can go wrong, will go wrong. And then my car sense breaks down, he needs a battery and it breaks down and blah, blah, blah. And just a lot of things. And we're like, it, it was so funny because I'm sitting in the couch knitting and he's sitting in the other couch drawing. And we're like, okay, baby, you're on vacation, but it's okay. And he's like, I'm okay with it, we'll just kick it. And we're like, okay. So on that Monday, they called them from his job and they go, we didn't have any finances. So we're like, we can't go out. But I was telling them, hey, let's just make all our piggy banks and let's go for Ridoso just for a, a day, go back there and come back. And then they call him from his job and they hey. tell him, hey, I need you to either come back to work, mind you that he's on vacation. <laughs> and he goes, or we have an emergency. I need somebody to go to San Bernardino. Hey, I'll go. Yeah. He's like, he goes, we'll pay you. And he goes, you know what? He goes, we'll fly you. He goes, how, how about you give me the money that the flight costs and I'll buy tires for my car and a battery. And he goes, we'll pay that. And we'll give you gas to go. Wow. Yeah. I was in awe. I was telling my husband, I was like, God is so good. Yes, he is. God is so good. Too good. Like, I was telling him, like, you, we were content with, okay, we're going to supposedly waste our whole vacation that week. But he knows the desires of our heart. Amen. And we wanted to come. Yeah. And so I just want to thank him that he made a way and we're here and we're blessed here with yeah. you guys. So thank you for having us. Praise God. Let me turn this off. Yeah, Rigo has me hooked up like a rat. Wire me down like a rat. I may be from boiling, but I ain't a rat, Rigo. I'm excited to be here. Uh, you know, I was sitting there and I was just kind of reminiscing that. Uh, uh, at the age of 23, I gave my life to the Lord in the Almighty Church. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So a little over two decades ago, we learned it. So, uh, I think we learned uh, many wonderful things through our pastors, Pastor Phil, Sister Didi, and uh, uh, something that was just ingrained uh, in our spiritual life to keep going, serving God, regardless of whatever yeah. happens, whatever transpires. We we just get up every day yeah, right. saying, Lord, I'm going to serve you today, Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. No matter what. Thank you. Right. Money, no money. Out, Thank you, Lord. Car, whatever. Gotcha. We've had uh, cars break down. We've Ooh. had this happen and that happen. And, uh, 
You get up, you got to make a decision yes. every day. Amen. To say, I'm going to serve you, Lord. Right. I'm going to live for you, regardless of what takes place. I want to get right into it, if you don't mind. There's a, uh, I'm so blessed that my pastor had an opportunity to go pay us a visit. Thank you, Sister Dean, for releasing him <laughs> out there. And if my wife is anything like you, I can hear her say, Get it out. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I tell my wife, well, I'll be back, baby. Bye. No. And so, uh, but uh, it was a tremendous blessing. Uh, there were a lot of things I got to share with my pastor. I want to I wanna talk to you a little bit about, uh, uh, kind of uh, take this message in the area of some personal experiences that we've had uh, in the past couple of years. And, and uh, kind of uh, totally different from uh, what we were accustomed to doing in the Almani, in the Al Paso Church. And, uh, uh, but because of that, because we broke out of that, come God on. brought revival. Oh, come on now. It's because we decided to break loose and, and get out of there. Uh, one time we had our meeting, we had uh, maybe about 10 leaders in there, and they were bickering and fighting, and oh my gosh, and they were just like at each other's throats. And my wife and I, we just grabbed hands, we stood up, and we said, you know what, guys, fix it. As for me and my wife, we're going to serve God, and we walked out of that meeting. <laughs> we walked out of our own meeting. We walked out. <laughs> but it changed the things within our church, and something began to happen. I want to, uh, I titled this spiritual boredness because there was some pl there was a place in my life that uh, uh, God had to really help me, or it was for me to really decide what I'm going to do. With what God gave me. On, you know, God gave you a yeah. substance yeah. In, within yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There is a power of God yeah. that is resting wow. on the inside on. of every believer that is in this place. On, and it's more than just sitting in the church. And it's more than just uh, daydreaming about what you can do for God. It's literally about getting up and doing what God yeah. is asking you to do. Romans chapter 8, chapter 10, verse 8. But what, what saith it? The word is nigh unto thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Yes. Ooh, yes. For there is no difference between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Yes. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, How then shall they call on him whom they have not Ooh, believed? Wow. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Right. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Yes. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Yes, sir. If they have not all obeyed the gospel, you're going to say, say, Lord, who has believed our report? So that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, I pray this evening, Lord God, help me with this, Lord. Let me plant a seed within your church, within your people, Father. The same works, God, that you began to do within my life years ago, Lord God, and are still doing it, Lord. I pray right now, Majesty, transfer that upon your saints today, Lord yeah. God. Let this word penetrate deep tonight, Father God. Let it be yeah. different this evening, Heavenly Father. Speak to them, Lord God, in a way that they can relate and they know it's you. Talking to them, Father. Yes, Father. I thank you, God, for this wonderful opportunity. And I give you glory and praise. And in Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen. It is only natural for us to become familiar with things that we are accustomed to doing on a daily basis. There are things in our life, amen, that we get up and we take for granted. There are other things that we do uh, out of mechanics, out of just doing them because we have to. And, and uh, when it came to the church, as far as for, uh, uh, in my church, what was happening there, we had this wonderful thing that was going on. The worship was exciting. People were giving God glory. They were shouting praises unto the Lord. 
the ministry was growing great. Uh, God was doing great things within that house. But even in that, amen, I, after Sunday morning uh, service, I would come out, uh, and this would take some months. I leave the church, and I'm driving home, and my wife was that, would ask me, how was church? And I said, eh, ah, those are all right. <laughs> How was it? No, it was good. Yeah, that preacher. No, I don't know. What preacher? You had a preacher? Yeah, me. I was bored. I was bored, baby. And so I would, I would leave the church and uh, bored of what I just preached Come and on. bored of my church. Now, don't get me wrong about worship and praise. It's about coming and giving God glory and honoring Him. And those are the things that has been instilled in our lives to do and we should do and we should lift up our hands and shout to the Lord Amen. and be faithful to the house of God and be committed in the ministries that the Lord has allowed us to perform Amen. and everything that transpires. But I'm talking about a spiritual boredness yeah. that for me, I knew there was much more than this. Amen. There had to be much more than this within my life. And I began to reflect about a lot of things that happened here at the El Monte Church years ago. Amen. When God was doing some great things, man, in the lives of people, man. It was an awesome thing to have seen. And I said, God, I, I want that, man. I, I want what we had over there. I want what was happening in the 80s. Uh, I want what you were doing in my life back then, God. This is great. Being a pastor is great. Getting up to preach is great. Giving orders to people was great. Uh, delegating people was great. Uh, but I know there's much more than this. Amen. And so I cried to the Lord so often about, God, what do you want me to do? And then one day I began, I went into the uh, worship practice and I stood in the back. <clears throat> I stood in the back and I began to just pray and I'm watching the worship team and I'm singing along with them. And I'm just glorifying God and I'm saying, God, what do you want me to do? What is there to do, Lord? We're doing, we're doing everything you want. The church is established. It is established, God. Your house is established. Your people are established. But I know that there's something you want me to do. And then the Lord spoke to me and said that I needed to get out of the walls. And I said, my goodness, what a concept. <laughs> oh my. It is a praise chapel and one concept. Get out of the walls and call people. Oh my. And I said, you know what? We're going to do that. I went home that night. I met. I was excited. I was on fire. I heard God speak to me. Just get out of the walls. I left. I got home. And I told my wife, babe, God spoke to me when I was praying. And she knows that I've been praying and I've been travailing and seeking God. And, and she said, and she, what did he say? The Lord says, I need to get out of the walls. And I'm going to go touch the lowrider community. And she says, you know, uh, you don't have a lowrider. Boo <laughs> <laughs> <Move> for Charlie. <laughs> so I said, you know what? The lowrider community is going to build me one. God's going to give me a car from them. So we went with that notion, and then we, get, we began to do something. Now, I'm going to kind of fat, go fast forward a little bit here. In the midst of all that, amen, there was something deep down on the inside that I began to ask the Lord about what I'm, going, what I'm about to do. One of them was, am I sure this is what you're asking me to do? And I was so positive, I told my wife, babe, where are my khakis? And she goes, you don't have khakis? Yeah, they're there. She goes, those size 38s? I said, yeah, but they don't fit me like that no more. I got to get them bigger, right? Where's my winos? You don't got white I got to go to Greenspan. They got to get some winos. So we had to kind of a go back a little bit. I said, man, I got I to gotta infiltrate the community, man. I got to walk in there and then surprise them with the gospel. I got to get them in one big place and preach to them. Hallelujah. And I believe that this is what God is trying to do within our lives many times. Amen. That uh, we get out of the box of our regular service unto the Lord. Wow. It's about coming to the house of God, but it's about coming to the well of the Lord. And we know, we understand this. We understand this very clearly. We come to the well of Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. When we come, we can be refreshed. We can take a drink. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. But many of us, we come to the well, we treat it like a jacuzzi. We want to stay in the well. <laughs> you know, we're waiting for the bubbles and we want to stay there. It's nice and fresh. It's nice and cool. And, and we treat the well like a jacuzzi. Come on. And God is trying to do something greater. Amen. And I think that God is calling the church. Our church, amen, into an Esther generation. Wow. 
The Easter generation was one that would rise up and plead for mercy on behalf yeah. of other people. Wow. You ever thought about that? That you're praying for people that don't want Jesus. Come on, man. Come on. They don't want to know about the Lord. They don't want to know about the gospel. But you're going over there and you're going to pray for them. You're going to intercede for them. Because this is what God is calling the church to become. An Esther generation. That would go out there and minister to a people. Amen. You and I, we come to this place. And we're wondering, what is it that you want us to do, Lord? And God is wanting us to give our lives to Him completely. I love it when He says, uh, you know, He, uh, 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 not many, you know, uh, have not given their house and their homes and their families and whatnot. Amen. Uh, but, uh, but He says, but for the gospel's sake, many people don't want to give up a lot. We'll give up stuff for, for one another, for the people, for Jesus Christ, but not for the gospel. I was so bored that I began this ministry of my wife and I. And we went out there every Sunday. Rico, do you know how boring that was to come out of church and have to watch the lowrider all the time? Uh, and they put on the outfit, the khakis and the my lights and go out there. Oh, the cruise was boring. You know, can you imagine a sacrifice? We were out there and began to preach. We began to talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. We began to share with them now that they were out there. But it wasn't all fun and games. Every Sunday, we leave the house at uh, 8 in the morning, go to church, have church, go home, get the car ready, get everything ready, and we'll be at the cruise by, oh. by 4 p.m. Wouldn't come back to the house maybe about 9, 10 o'clock. And this was our Sunday for about a whole year and a half. You know, this is about putting your leisure aside, right. putting your wants aside. And it was a big sacrifice to do all this, amen, as, as great as it was, as in, uh, we enjoyed it, we loved it, but it, it, costs, it, it costs your time to get out of the box and do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we would go, amen, and for eight months we began to preach. Once they were all there, we would preach, we'd pray, we'd do a prayer walk. Amen. Uh, five blocks that way, five blocks this way before the cruise would start. That was Amen. exhausting, man. But we do it because we would establish the presence of God. Amen. For eight months, we preached the gospel. Nobody was getting saved. Come on. And I was getting mad at God. I said, Lord, you brought me out here. Like, like I wasn't really mad at God. <laughs> Lord, you brought me out here. And no one's getting saved. That was my cry to the Lord. Man, Lord, it's been eight months. Nobody's getting saved. Nobody has given their life to the Lord. Nobody has stepped into the church. And I began to question if I miss God or not. And then one day on Facebook, somebody puts on their... Is this cutting off? Yeah. Somebody put... It, what, why, Regal? <laughs> Go ahead and get the hand out. You can't put it in your pocket. you got to hook it on the outside. Mm -hmm. like, they, like a gun? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pastor Phil knows how to handle the gun. Oh my God. <laughs> so on Facebook, somebody posted something on there that uh, lifted my spirit up. By a person I didn't even know, never met. And they wrote on there, this is unbelievable. How can a pastor be at a cruise? Come on. He can't be real. It's unbelievable. But then I began to watch him, she says. And week after week, I began to watch how he walked and how he talked and how he hanged around with people. I began to watch every move on his Facebook and I began to see that he was becoming, he was legit in my eyes. He was a real deal, she was saying. And I, and I began to cry. I said, oh my God, somebody's watching. I can't give up now because somebody's watching. Right. Eight months. And here I go, let's go, baby, we got to go do it. So we would go out there, and God began to do some incredible things in the life. A couple of times, I always got jumped by a gang called Chico Tango. <laughs> They're kind of reminiscent to the MS-13. And, 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 and I told the guy, hey, you, 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 can't, be, you can't park right here. That's my homie, yes, it's I know it's your homie, bro, but you can't park here. That's my homie. It's, bro, 
But you can't, he can't park it, just tell him to move. So I'm walking away from the scene, and the guy's walking next to me, a pelon guy all tacked down, and he's walking next to me, mad dogging me, I can feel it. I said, oh my God. <laughs> I walk to my wife, I turn around, and I see him, they're changing shoes. And I told my wife, babe, something's about to go down, something goes down, I want you to just call the cop, just call the cop. We didn't have no backup. My wife was my only backup. Come on, amen. Amen. So eight of them, they all come up to me and they're about to, it's about to go down. I'm about to go down. <laughs> come on, brother. Right when he got three feet from me, a gentleman steps right in the front of us and tells the other guy, hey, this is Pastor Eddie, man. He's the one in charge of the cruise. And that guy comes, oh, I'm in the Spence. I said, sorry, Pastor, he kisses my hand. <laughs> I turned around, I didn't know this, but there was many people behind me to jump in in case oh, they did. I said, oh my God, these <laughs> angels are me. So people began to come in, and as they began to come in, we began to disciple them, began to sit with them, week after week, uh, day after day, tired, coming out of work, we're tired, and we'd go meet somebody at their house. We'd go, we'd go and there would be three, four, five disciples, their wives there. we sit with them for about four or five hours. This is going on, man, week after week, day after day. And we would just do it because we knew somebody had to do it. Somebody had to pay the price. Yes. And we would go. And one time, somebody uh, 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 kind of told me off on Facebook because they got, they got a ticket at the cruise. And they say, isn't that pastor supposed to be protecting us? <laughs> From the cops and, and <laughs> I ain't that powerful. <laughs> and so, uh, in our church came in a gentleman, an older gentleman, veterano guy. Uh, I believe he was a main guy, and um, uh, he jumped in on that conversation. And he says, "Hey, what's going on? Who's talking to Pastor Eddie?" And the guy who was coming against us, uh, he said, "No, no, 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 no. The Spencer Eddie, the Spencer, nothing. We'll take care of it." I didn't know this, but five of my disciples got together, and they were going to take this guy out. They were already packed. And I said, well, it is kind of Almani style, but <laughs> they're not there yet. They haven't arrived. You know what I mean? They still had a lot of learning to do. And they were going to go take this guy out. I said, no, 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 we pray for people. We pray for them. And then... Uh, you know, so thank God that didn't happen, amen. <laughs> but there's something that happens in the lives of people when we step out of the yes, out of the norm. If you're willing to believe and you're willing to trust God, that He says that you won't be put to shame. Man. Now, regardless whether you believe that what you're doing is of God or not, obedience was the factor in my life. Say. It was a factor of my life. I'm just gonna do it because you're asking me to do it, Lord. I don't see the fruit. I don't see what's happening. I want it to move quicker, but I'm just going to get up and do it because you're asking me to do it. Whether somebody else is doing it or not, whether people were following us or not, we would do it out of obedience. Yes. And through that obedience, the Lord honored it, and God began to do some incredible things uh, in that ministry within that church. People began to get saved before we knew it. The house was filled. Everybody from the lowrider seat, and it's not as big as the lowrider seat here uh, by no means. Come on. But everybody seemed to know everybody right. by face or car. Right. But when they came into the church, it seemed like some, most of them were enemies. And it was a battle, it was going on, it was just like, oh my goodness, we're not going to that church, why? Because we don't talk to these people, we don't go, we're not going over there no more, Pastor, why? Because, you know, so-and-so this, and, and we just kind of left it alone. And I, that's what I told my pastor. I sure was no pastor devil. That's for sure. I, I didn't have that patience. But God was doing something in the lives of the people that were going. That's right. They were seeing something that they'd never seen before. Come on. Come on. They were seeing somebody who claimed to be a man of God and literally walking what he was talking. Yes, sir. Come on. You see, I believe this is what our generation needs today. Yes. Is a people that is strong, amen. There's people that are, what they know and understand of God, what they say of the Lord, what they proclaim, what they declare, the words of faith, amen, that every day of their lives, amen, 
They are consistent in what they're saying. Look out. And it is because of that people begin to come to the church there uh, in Ambassador. I believe it is simply because of God's wonderful grace that people were giving their lives to the Lord. People were uh, coming back to church. The backsliders were serving God. There was this group of uh, young ladies uh, that parked right next to us. Uh, they were all flirtations. They were all fishing out there. They had their pistol. They were looking for the hookup. And my wife goes, give them a flyer. I said, you're going to give them a flyer? They're, they're over there. No, no, no. I'm not. They're out of it, babe. I'm, give them a flyer. I'm not going to give them a flyer, babe. They're drunk already. And so after a while, I said, okay, I'm going to give them a flyer. I gave them a flyer. Out of those girls, one of them came to church. Wow. Yeah. Come on now. And she began to serve the Lord. Within eight months, she ended up passing away from drinking. Wow. Beautiful young lady. Wow. But through her came another family in our church. Amen. See, you don't know who you're talking to right. sometimes. And that, that might, you might be the last person they hear the gospel Come from. Amen. But if you're not obedient to the Lord yes. to share and to talk to somebody, yes. you might miss the opportunity yes. of bringing somebody to the heavens. Yes. Man. You see, I was bored because I was doing something that uh, I was no longer doing, and that was just sitting on my butt after service. And when we began to do this thing, something new began to happen. Man. People wanted prayer. Come on. They really Come did. Come on. They would see us on the, uh, uh, with our 51 at a park, wherever we go, and they would give us, Jace, can you come to my house and pray for my house? And so we would do this over and over, weekend after weekend. We'd be going to someone's home to pray for their home, Come on, to pray for their marriage, Come on. to pray for healing. We would visit them in the hospital, whether we knew them or not, just because they found us on Facebook, we'd go visit them. Come on. Man. And I said, man, that's having church, man. Woo. We're yeah. having church. Thank you, Jesus. We're having a wonderful time Woo. doing what God has called us Thank you, Jesus. at the church. Come on. God is doing great things because there's a people that are beaten. Some of the disciples began to follow us as we began to pray for homes. We're casting out devils. It was a funny thing. <laughs> Pastor, can you pray for this home? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. We go. And, and, and I go, this is what we're going to do. We'll anoint them with oil. It was funny. And they would hear me pray. And I would say, devil, that's it. You don't belong here anymore. And I began to pray and we, I rebuke you, devil. I began to speak in tongues that they were shocked. When they should all have been praying, they're all looking at me like. <laughs> and they're like looking at me. And it was funny because I would walk, uh, walk in the living room. And as I'm walking, they're going. <laughs> But they began to do that with their friends. Come on. Then they began to go to the hospitals Come themselves. On. See, there's something about what God's doing in our life yes. that we allow to lay dormant. And that is the power of Christ Man. that is resting Man. on the inside Watch of you. There is an anointing of God in you to change the lives That's of people right, and to change your destinies. There's something great that transpires, and I know the devil will come against you. I know for some people, they don't want to take up the challenge. And the struggle, as they say, can be real. But you got to get up every day. Yes, sir. And you got to understand that you have Jesus on the inside. Yes, that greater is he that is in you yes, than he that is in the world. Yes, that you can pray for somebody and they literally will give their life Come on, amen. to the Lord. Yes, because you're obedient. Thank you. See, when you have spiritual uh, boredness, it has nothing to do whether you're worshiping and coming and giving God glory on a Sunday or on a Wednesday or whatever day or your commitment to your ministry. And it's what you do afterwards. Man. What are you doing afterwards? Look out. Come on. Look out. Who are you calling? Who are you inviting? Come on. Well, I've tried inviting these people. I've tried inviting my parents. Cast the net on the other side. Look out, man. Cast it on the other side of the track. Come on now. There's chinos over there. Cast it on to the Cast it wherever. But there's a people that need to hear about That's Jesus right. Christ. And you and I have an answer of hope. Good word. They have an answer of hope. There's something incredible that's on the inside of you. Yes, there is. And it's big. And it's going to change the world. Yes, sir. It's going to touch lives. 
You see, we don't have the big congregation that we had two years ago when this all began. But when we go to the street, they come to where we're at to talk to us so we can pray for them. We literally sit by our car and they'll come to us and they'll sit there and they want to know about Jesus Christ. Amen. We tell them, we send them away with a prayer because we know that what God's doing in us, he can also do in them. Right. You want to get out of your boredness? Get out of your house. Get out of your leisure. Get out of your comfort zone. Go preach the gospel. Well, nobody wants to come. It doesn't matter. Right. We had a church. Nobody wanted to go to the streets, man. Right. It was my wife and I. That's right. And sometimes little Amy would go with us. Come on. Nobody wanted to go. And, 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 and guess what? We stopped inviting our own church. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. I'm not inviting them. To, you're going to invite somebody for the church? No, I don't. No. Let's just go ourselves. That's right. Watch out. And we would go Watch and out. preach. And preach. Yeah. And preach. We were tired sometimes. And the battle was hard sometimes. Come on, amen. And a lot of our church didn't understand. They didn't get it. But when, but when people started coming in, they began to see why we would go out there Sunday after Sunday. And in that battle, we would come to the Lord over and over. And we're crying, God, what? Lord, we're tired, man. This battle's been hard. The enemy has come against us enough to want us to quit, to surrender, to stop, to give it up. We question why we're doing what we're doing. We were saying, you know what, let's just give up these. Pick, we picked up some accounts from places where we do car shows. Let's just give it up, give up everything, give up the street, let it be. Not give up the 51, I kept almost gonna keep that. <laughs> We were tired. You know that song, Cansado del Camino? Ooh. We would sing it. Cansado del Camino, seriendo de ti. Un desierto he cruzado, sin fuerza se quedado. Para ti, you constantly, constantly sing it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Because Jesus loves my feet. I said, man, Lord, I'm tired. My feet hurt. My shoes hurt. <laughs> you, you walk one we would walk. That's right, that's right. that prayer walk before the cruise was five blocks that way, five blocks that way. Come on, come on. And not only that, we walked the whole thing all the night long talking to people. Come on. Yeah. Everything would hurt, man. My legs would go home tired and burned out. I said, Lord, we're tired, man. When are people going to come? Jesus name. And I would remember this. I would remember this. How can they call upon him whom they have not believed? Right. And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless, the one, unless they are sent right. as it is written? <coughs> how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel yes, sir. of peace. Amen, amen. And I would tell the Lord, Lord, my feet are not beautiful. But I'll go. Come on. Can I tell you something tonight? You got some beautiful feet. Yes, sir. Come on now. Huh? Nope. Yes, sir. I know we cover them with socks. <laughs> shoes. Baby cuffs, I'll be good, brother. <laughs> uh, the taller the sock, the downer the guy. How's it going? Something like that. But you have beautiful feet. Yes, sir. And the Lord knows how they look. Ooh. See, you might hide them from everybody else. And you might even hide them from yourself. Right. You know, when you got those zombie feet. The walking feet. <laughs> but to the Lord, they're beautiful. Yes, they are. Because they carry something. They carry the gospel of peace. Yes. Amen. When you look at your feet, the way Jesus looks at them, this is not because it's so beautiful. 
Right. Because you're taking something to somebody who doesn't know me. It's going somewhere where a lot of people don't want to go. That's right. See, we come out of church and we go home. And we're wondering where's revival. Come on, amen. And we're waiting for somebody else to bring it in. We're waiting for the preacher man and the preacher woman, la pastora, to go out there and bring it in. Right. But you're the one with the beautiful feet. Yes, sir. See, your husband, your wife, I say the other, uh, the ones. But God says they're beautiful yeah, because they get to go into homes where people are not coming here. Oh my. They're going to places where nobody wants to go. You see, I began to look at my feet differently. It's a big God. I'll go. I'll go. Tired. I want to give up. I want to give up in the ministry. I want to give up on this. The people, nobody's getting saved. They don't get it. I'm preaching. It's been eight months, Lord. Come on, man. Get home from church. Take off my Stacy's. Sometimes I would just go with my Stacy's to the cruise. Put on Cortez. And then I'm tired. Why? And sometimes I didn't want to walk. And then I go for a walk. Where are you going, babe? My wife would ask. I gotta go walk. I thought you were tired, I know. But you know, there's there's a new car club over there I've never seen before. I'm gonna go tell them about Jesus. Ooh, man. And so God began to touch lives. You see, God's not looking for something that you feel would change the course of things. God's just looking for that heart that says, you know what, I got to do something for the Lord. More than this. That's right. See, I believe in touching lives. I believe in preaching the gospel. I believe in what, it, what happened to me. I believe that it worked in my life. Yes, sir. I believe that the preaching that I heard within this church changed my life. Yes, it does. I believe the power that is resting on the inside of me that was in, embedded into my life, instilled into my life, imparted Man. into my Man. life, I believe it worked because it changed my life. Yes, sir. Come on. So when I see somebody that doesn't have Jesus Christ, I just want to tell them how much God loves them. Right. Wow. You know, one of the hardest things that I had to do was to sit with a lot of people, I started one of the Bible studies that we started. This young lady knew everybody. Regal, this mic keeps cutting off, bro. Get the hand help. <laughs> Told this young lady, she says, Pastor, I invited everybody. I go, good, good. But Pastor, a lot of them drink. And I said, all right. Can I tell them come as they are? I said, you know what? You tell them come as they are. Man. And they literally brought their cases. They're more people. <laughs> they did to Bible study, Sister Bunny. That night, there were 60 people in that house. Yeah. Those cases of beer. But many of them got saved. And before you knew it, they were coming to Bible study without their drinks. Come on. They were, whether they were drinking before they got there, I don't know. But they, they started respecting this. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. All because I said, come as you are. And I began to talk to the Lord about it. And I said, God, was this bad? Was I this bad? I must have been this bad. Right. <laughs> you know, sometimes we don't want new people in the church. New people? Oh, they bring bad spirits. Oh, come on. They bring problems. Oh, we don't want, oh, we don't want new people. We're worshiping God great. <laughs> the worship, everything's yeah. great. There's yeah. a unity in our church, man. Yeah. We're having enough. We don't want new people. They bring problems. Oh, they bring flies and mosquitoes oh, and hooligans oh, and issues. And we don't want new people. Oh, come on. Awesome. But you're missing out on the greatest miracle of God, and that is the changing of hearts and how God changes lives. Today, we need to stand on our feet right now. I want you to do something as you stand. I want you to
you to look at your feet. Just look at them. And if I don't see you looking at them, I'm going to go over there and take one of your shoes off. <laughs> but I want you to look at your feet. <laughs> Just take a good look at them. There's something about those feet that the Lord says, Man, they are beautiful. Yes, sir. Sandy, those feet are beautiful. See, a lot of people don't know Sandy started coming to the Bible study we had right there on a trail in Garvey. And I remember she came and she was very broken. Remember that? And she had a hard time hugging people. She really did. She never wanted to hug us. It was always shake hands. Until she told us her story. So she was very broken. But we began to love her. We began to care about her, her husband, her daughter. And now she's a hugger. <laughs> See, when those feet are moving, and they're going to work, and they're doing what God has called them and designed them to do, when you walk back to church, there's people that follow those footprints. See, your feet are very precious. And you might have six toes. You might have the corn, and you might have the ingrown, and your feet might be purple. I don't know. Oh my. But if you can look at them the way Jesus does, and you're wondering, what can I do to change the lives around me? Yes, Father. Just stand up like I did one time, and I said, okay, God, I'm going to put shoes on these feet, and I'm going to go and do what you called me to do. Yes. I'm not going to wait on nobody. I'm going to go without just me and my wife. Yes. We're going to go. Because people need Jesus. Yes. It's more than just church. It's more than inviting them to church. You are inviting them to inherit eternal life. Amen. You're inviting them to Christ Jesus. And when you do that, you're lifting up the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the lifting up of the name of Christ, the Lord would draw all men unto him. There's not much you could do but just watch somebody and say, you know what, man? And they might say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to deal with it. So I just wanted to say that. That God loves you. I'm not, I'm not here to shove the gospel down your throat. You don't have to listen to me. I'm not even going to say it anymore. I just wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. You see, there's a lot of couples here that have great potential yes, sir. in the kingdom of God. And when we were on that cruise, my wife would stand by the car. And she would be there praying while I'm walking, ministering to people. My mind. Somebody had to watch the car. A lot of gangsters out there. <laughs> so she'd be watching the car, and I'd be walking. See, if you couples would say, you know what, let's do something for God. Yes. Something different. Let's just get pastor and tell pastor what we're doing, and let's just go do it. What if nobody goes? It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'll go. I'll go. The question is tonight, are you willing to believe that you can change the lives of your community? Yeah. Now listen to the word community. That's not one person. My wife and I, through the grace of God, in that lowrider community, the big question that everybody had was, who's Eddie, who's Pastor Eddie? We don't know him, we've never seen him before. Then we had to tell him, hey, you know, what we're doing, what's happening. And we made an impact in the whole lowrider scene. Everybody knows who we are. Right. Everybody speaks to my, to my wife or I. Right. We send out a lot of prayers. We pray for people. We tell people to meet us at the park. We tell people we'll go visit, visit you at the hospital. We'll go see you. We'll go pray for your home. We'll go pray for your children. You're not saved. You don't know Jesus. But it's okay. We're going to go over there and show you what he's capable of doing. Wow. You know what I'm saying? you got to get out. Yeah. Those feet that you have. It can't change the world. That if you 
begin now and pray and talk to one another and say, you know what? We need to do it. This church will be filled before, before springtime. People will be in this house. That's right. Yeah. And it wasn't about it always waiting on somebody to get saved. It was just about sharing, planting a seed. And then the Lord, because you know what happens when you plant a seed? All you have to do now is wait for the harvest. Yeah. But if you ain't planting, if you ain't scattering the seed, you got nothing to wait for. Your family ain't going to come. Huh? Your primos, your primas, huh? your primo in the wheelchair ain't going to come. Your homies, your homegirls. Huh? We're afraid to connect with the world. We're afraid to connect with the sinners. Right. We're afraid to talk to the unsaved. Right. We're thinking, while well, they're buzzing. It didn't matter to me if they were drunk, man. What mattered to me is that I had an opportunity to preach a gospel that could change their life. We have a couple in our church named Weno and Jenny, man, the biggest alcoholic of the whole Lowrider community. Right. Man, that was their fame to glory right there. I'm an alcoholic. And I said, that's, that's okay. Jesus loves you still. Right. They didn't want to come to church. They were the first couple that came to church. Oh. Gangster now, pastor met them. Tattooed down, head, bow, hurt them in. God can touch them. God touched you. Yes. You were an ugly sinner. Yes. Huh? You had issues. You had problems. You needed Jesus. And somehow, some way, somebody had some beautiful feet that brought the gospel of peace into your life. Uh, and you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Uh, and now that, that has transcended into your life. Uh, now you have the power of Christ. All of heaven is right behind you when you preach the gospel. See, I don't want to hide your faith. It was a battle. It was a struggle. But I wanted to pay the price. I wanted to pay the price for my Lord. The Bible says this woman named Mary busted through the doors. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees. He's talking to the disciples. There's an audience of people there. He's sitting on a chair and she comes busting in through the doors and she falls at the feet of Jesus. She's weeping and she's crying and she's wiping his feet and washing his feet with her tears and wiping it with her hair. And just when they were about to pull her away, Jesus says, let her be. And he said something about her that, you know, resonated within my life. Jesus said, her sins, which were many, Come on. are forgiven. Yes. yes, sir. So she loves much. But the one who loves little, who, who is forgiven little, loves little. That's right. Man, and I said, Lord, I was jacked up when I got saved. That's right. I was a thief. I was a liar. I was a conniver. I was a hypocrite. I hated Mexicans. Come oh, on. I know Sister Didi is like, what? You know, you know, it's just back at that time. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just back at that time when we were growing up. I hated Mexicans in our school. The Mexicanos would be on one side, the Chicanos on another side, the Anglos on another side. And this was in ballpark. Oh, well, congratulations to uh, Terry and Alfonso right there. I went, to, I went to school with them. Terry said she was afraid of me. Alfonso says he just stood away from me. I just ignored him, he says. <laughs> you see, I learned something. And I said, man, Lord, I love you so much. Yeah. Because I've been saved for so long, I kind of forgot how messed up I was. And remembering by looking at the people that were coming in the church, I said, man, I was just like them. Caught up in the car club, caught up in the drinking and the smoking and the talking. I was messed up and I began to love God even more. Man. Reminding of who I was. That sinner. That prejudiced person. The one that was broken and full of hate, on, bitterness. I began to love God by His grace. I said, Man, God, you love me. I want to love you right back, Jesus. So my wife and I, we began to teach people that. And so that's what took us to the streets. 
going to do one last thing. I believe the Lord is about to change the course of this church. And it's going to be a lot of people coming into this house. But at the same token, there's got to be a lot of people ready to receive the unreceivables. The destitute, the broken, the messed up, the liars and the connivers, the cheaters, the thieves, the hypocrites. Can you look beyond that and just say, you know what? I was just like you. Come on in. You fit right with us. You're one of us. And it's because on those feet that you have, it says they're carrying something, the presence of God Almighty. I'm not talking about leadership. I'm not talking about right. those with pastoral titles. I'm talking about the saints of God <laughs> saying, I got something worth to give to the unsaved. Yes, I don't know the whole gospel. I don't know the whole story, but what I know <laughs> has changed my life. And that's good enough. Yes, and if you're willing to take the Lord and go on a ride with Jesus Christ, go on a cruise with him, and touch people of your kind, huh? Of your kind. See, they're in the, they're out there, they're cruising the streets, man. They're at the park getting wasted. They're getting high. They're lost in their sin, like you. And somebody needs to walk up to them and say, "Hey, God bless you guys. Good to meet you. Good to see you." And be patient with God and patient with them. If you're willing to go for a ride with Jesus Christ, I want you to do something very significant. I want you to take one shoe off. Just one shoe off. I don't care if your foot stinks. <laughs> your spirit stinks worse than that. That's right. Yeah. Just take one. Pick the one that doesn't have the hole in the sock. <laughs> Sandy took one off. I want you to bring your shoe and I want you to put your foot at the altars. Hallelujah. And just say, Lord Jesus, can you use this foot? Lord, can you use this foot right here? It hasn't trotted. It hasn't walked to the highways and byways. It hasn't taken this gospel anywhere. You can take them both off. It doesn't matter. But there's one person here Maybe two, maybe three. That's going to touch this city for Jesus. There's one person in this place, maybe two, maybe three. That's going to change the dynamic of this church. That the sinner, the unsaved, they're going to come in. A week from now, a month from now, six months from now. They're going to come in. And they're going to come in because the gospel was being preached. It doesn't matter what background they have. And it doesn't matter whether you relate to them or not. If you relate to them, praise God. If you don't, the Lord sure does. But we need that heart of compassion once again. We need that heart of God. That Moses calling. We need that call. That Isaiah, when he saw the Lord at the temple, and they said, Lord, send me. This is more than just church service. It's connecting with the broken. It's connecting. It's looking at that back and saying, man, that person was messed up. I know they were because I was just like them. God, give me compassion for them, Lord. I don't want to just be a religious person in my church, Lord. I don't want to be the one that knows every song in the church. I don't want to be the one that understands every step of ministry. I want to touch lives, God. I want to minister to the unsaved, Lord. Jesus, look at my feet. Lord, look at my feet. If you can use my feet, Lord, it's right here, God. It's right here. Take it to the highways and take it to the byways, Lord. Take it to the streets, Jesus. Take it where you want it to go. I'll go, Lord. Speak to me, God. Speak to me. There's people that are broken. Jesus, and I'm coming to your house as if nothing is happening. People are messed up, and I come to your house like nothing is happening. 
I hear that they need prayer and I do nothing about it, God. I'm so content with my own walk. I'm so content with my own salvation that I care little about the unsaved. Jesus, when you look at my feet, Lord, can you count my feet in, Jesus? Come on, let them sing as I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. God wants to do that in your life. God can and He will. If 
you're willing to just obey. That day when the Lord says, not today, you don't get your rest. There's some people that you need to go visit. Yes. See, some of you know where the connections are at. Right. And some of you know where the car club hangouts are at. Right. And some of you know where people are chilling. You got to go. Yes. Just go. Go prayed up. Go fasted up. Yes. I fasted 15 days for that revival. It didn't end. The revival didn't happen until like eight months, nine months later. But I was serious with Jesus. I said, Lord, I, I love being a pastor, but I love to be in the streets. God can do it. God can fill this church up again with the unsaved and the uglies like you and the stinky spirited people like you. But look at you now. Beautiful feet. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Thanks for coming. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this evening, Father God. We thank you for the, for the time, Father God, that you spend with us, Father God. Help us, Father God, to understand, Father God, how important, Father God, our feet are, Father God. That we take to heart, Father God, what was shared by our pastor, Father God. Give us strength and courage and boldness to know, Father God, that we can do all things, Father God, through you, Father God. We thank you. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, hey. amen, amen. Don't forget, for those that haven't signed up, we will sign up in the, in the, in the lobby there for our, this weekend, amen? God bless.